Okay, so we're at the holiday of Sukkot. Holiday of Sukkot. Holiday of Sukkot. Right after Yom Kippur. After Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, very scary. Hashem is judging us. We were asking for a new year. Please forgive us. We're so sad. We're fasting. Sukkot, opposite. Sukkot is the holiday. It's called Zman Simchaten, where we're supposed to be happy. This is our special time with Hashem. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. That's one of my favorite holidays. And let's just, let's try to understand what's going on with this holiday. So, when the Jewish people left Egypt during Pesach, there's a few things I didn't tell you. Number one is, it, they didn't go the easy way. They didn't go. They could have went right, just like that, and they would have been at sale. It takes about two weeks to get there at Yisrael. They didn't do that. Hashem made them go the long way. They went down, 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 down. They went, you see Yam Suf over here. This is Yam Suf. They went through Yam Suf. They went down. They got the Hasinai over here. Then they went up. They went down. They went sideways until they got there. It took 40 years in the desert. When they were in the desert for 40 years, the desert is not a fun place. It's a very, very, very hot place. And during the day, it could get very, very cold in the winter. And all they could do is build a sukkah. That's how they lived. They lived in sukkahs. They didn't have anything else. They couldn't make a tent. They couldn't make a house. They built a sukkah. They built a sukkah, and that's how they lived. And even though it was just straw and some pieces of wood and planks, still, it was pretty comfortable for another reason. See, when the Jewish people were in the desert, on top, right over here, there was this huge cloud that was covering them. That was Hashem's special cloud. Hashem's special cloud was there to protect the Jewish people. It made sure it was never hot. It was never cold. It was never, you know those little mosquitoes that bother you in the summer? They were never there. They were never there. It was always a special, special, special place. It was, the weather was perfect. Nobody ever complained. No one said it was hot. No one ever said it was cold. It was perfect because of those clouds. It never rained on them. It never snowed on them. The weather was always perfect. So because they lived in Sukkot and because of those clouds that were on top, Hashem asked us to remember that time where we sit there and we build, we, every once a year, we build a sukkah. And we live in a sukkah for seven days. We build a sukkah, any wall, it has to have at least three walls. It could have four walls, it could have five walls, it, but it has to have at least three walls. Three walls and on top has to be sechach. Now, what is sechach? Sechach, anything that grows from the ground. It can't be attached to the ground. It can't have a, uh, it can't have a, uh, it can't have a tree covering the sukkah. It has to be pieces of wood, bamboo, leaves. In Eretz Yisrael, this is what a typical neighborhood looks like. What, every porch has a sukkah. Every porch, every garden has a sukkah, one on top of the other. And you know what? Go out this week. When you're taking a walk, look around your neighborhood. You'll start to see a lot of Sukkot in the area. It's people, a lot of us, Baruch Hashem, are building gorgeous, gorgeous Sukkot. There's some people really, really, really fancy Sukkot. Why are they so fancy with decorations? Because when I make a mitzvah, I want the mitzvah to be beautiful. I don't want to make a, eh, I don't want to sketch it. I don't want to play games. I want to make the mitzvah the most beautiful way. When I buy a suit to wear on Rosh Hashanah, I wear uh, it's the most stunning suit, the most beautiful tie, and I come to shul. When girls, when you wear shul, when you wear a dress, you want to dress the most beautiful dress out there, right? You don't want to wear an ugly dress. You want a pretty dress, right? When I get a shofar, I want a shofar with a nice, beautiful sound. When I get a megillah with beautiful writing. When I sit in a sukkah, I want a beautiful Sukkah, I put decorations, pictures, brachot, I make it beautiful. That's what the sukkah is about. It's called making the mitzvah beautiful. It's an extra special mitzvah. Whenever you do a mitzvah, try to make it the most bestest way. When you're setting up the table, try to make it look stunning. Every time that you're, you're, you, you set up the, the napkins in a beautiful way, you got another mitzvah. And then, night of it's very hard to get from the sukkah to the from the house to the sukkah to bring the plates therefore we need you to help mommy grandma whoever it may be that you're by help as much as you can 
right? The chairs, the setting the table, bringing the plates, setting up the cups. You're good with that. Baruch Hashem, we do it every day in school. That's part one. We sit in the sukkah. We sit in the sukkah. We eat, you have to eat bread the first night of sukkot in the sukkah. It's a big mitzvah. Just like on Pesach, we eat matzah. On Sukkot, you have to eat a piece of bread in the Sukkah. Next morning, we're going to shake the love etrog, the semen out of what the four species, the arba'a minim. So let's talk about in Eretz Israel and many places over here in America, we call that there's the shuk arba'a minim. There is the market of the four species where you could go. There's a big section of just Lulavi, big section of just Etrogim, big section of just Hadassim, Aravot. They take a look at it. They want to make them, again, you want to make the mitzvah as beautiful as possible. You take a look. You want a Lulav that is straight. You want an Etrog that is perfect. You want Hadassim that are perfect. You want Aravot that are perfect. Let's talk about the Etrog. The Etrog. Beautiful, beautiful Etrog over here we see. Nice yellow etrog. Now etrogim could come in yellow, they could come in green, they could come yellowish green. Now, the less spots, the less brown spots on it, the more beautiful. Now, on top is a pitom. Everyone see the pitom? Everyone see the pitom? On the bottom is the orchids. The orchids is where it's connected to the tree. The pitom is that little bump that comes out. If your father has an etrog with a pitom, we have to be very, very careful not to break it. Because if it breaks, the entire etrog is not kosher. You can't make a beracha on it on, on Sukkot. You can't shake the love and etrog on Sukkot because the pitom broke. Got it? You have to be very careful with it. So if daddy gets you a etrog with a, with a pitom, you have to be extremely careful. However, some etrogim, they come from Yemen, they are they they grow without a pitom. Pay attention. They don't have a pitom. They're much much bigger. A lot of times they're green, they're beautiful, beautiful etrogim, but they don't have a pitom. They are a hundred percent kosher. They're very very good etrogim, beautiful etrogim. Just they don't have an, a, the pitom, so you don't have to worry about the pitom falling off. If it has a pitom, then you have to worry. If it, if it has a pitom, you got to worry. If it doesn't have, if it wasn't born with a pitom, you don't have to worry. Sometimes I get these etrogim also, depends. Whichever one's nicer, I get. Yeah, you see? Now, when I tell you they're big, they're big. They're huge, right? They come out beautiful, beautiful, these etrogim. So on the right hand, we hold the lulav, the etrog. Uh, in the right hand, you, you hold your lulav, you have the semen out of vote. And in the left hand, we hold the etrog. And, and now there's time to come to shake. We shake, we hold it together and we shake. We hold it to all, now you see this is called a compass. The compass tells us not what time is it. It tells us which way we are facing north. Up here is north. Over here is east. Over here is the south. And over here is the west. That means we're going to shake the lulav and etrog to all the all the parts of the world, all the sides, to the south, to the north, to the east, to the up, down, west, right? South is downwards over here. North is upwards. East is this way. West is that way. Then there's coming towards us is up and down. We're going to shake the lulav to every side of the world. Now, what's the reason? Because when we, sorry, when we pray to Hashem, the lulav represents our spine. Everyone pay attention. In the back of your body, there's a spine. It has knots. Everyone see the knots of your spine? There's 18 knots, like the 18 berachot and the amidah. When we pray, we have to stand straight like a lulav. Next. When we pray, we have to mean it. The etrog and our heart is the same thing. The etrog represents our heart. That when we pray, we have to have meaning. We have to understand what we are saying and be thankful to Hashem for everything. The hadasim leaves, I want you to pay attention, are the shape of eyes. They're the shape of eyes. That when you're looking in a sidur, you need your eyes when you pray. And the aravot are the shape of our lips because you need to pray moving your lips you can't just read the words you got to say the words 
Now, in the time of the Beit HaMikdash, everyone would come to Sukkot, to Eretz Yisrael, and they would dance in the Beit HaMikdash, and they would be juggling uh, with fire, and they would be uh, uh, singing and dancing and music and music and music. Anybody live here over here? Your job was to sing and play the music in the Beit HaMikdash. Yisrael would be the ones juggling. It would be gorgeous. They would step the entire night and they would pour water on the Mizbeach and they would pray that Hashem gives us a rainy year because it's very important that we have rain this year because Eretz Yisrael needs a lot of rain in order to live so we can have fruits and vegetables. Today we don't have a bit of Mikdash, but still every year on Sukkot we sing and we dance and we sing and we dance and we spend nights and nights and nights dancing. It's called Simhat Bet HaShoeva. They still do it until today. In the morning in Eretz Yisrael, today, today we only have a kotel. We don't have a Beit HaMikdash, but people come in thousands and thousands of people bring the lulav and they throw and they shake the lulav by the kotel. Such a big mitzvah to shake the lulav by the kotel. And of course, the famous Berkat Kohanim. I'm sure we have Kohanim over here. You're sure daddy says, it uh, gives a special Berkat, berkat Kohanim. In Eretz all the Kohanim, they gather, they go up to the front, and thousands and thousands of Kohanim give all the Jewish people Berachot, special Berachot on the holiday. And then after, after Sukkot, there's a two-day holiday. The first day is Shemini Atzirat, where we pray for the rain. In Tefillah, we don't say Morid Atal anymore. We're now going to say Mashiva Ruach, Morid Hageshem. And then, of course, my favorite holiday, Simhat Torah, is the holiday where we finish reading the Torah. We read all the way to the end. We make a huge party. We sing. We dance. We wave our flags. And, of course, my favorite part of the holiday, candy bags. And then we roll the Torah back to the beginning and start all over again. Yeladim. I'll see everyone a little bit later, maybe tomorrow, maybe Thursday. Shalom, Yeladim. Bye, everyone.